You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how a battery works and how you can make your very own. To make the battery, we're going to be using copper coins, foil, and vinegar. If your copper coins are dirty, go ahead and try using vinegar or ketchup to try and polish them up. To contain the vinegar in the battery, I cut up these squares of thin cardboard. So go ahead and take some distilled vinegar and place your squares of cardboard inside of them. While the cardboard is soaking in the vinegar, let's go ahead and take some of this foil and cut out squares of it as well. Seeing how the penny is only this big, this means that the squares should be around this size as well. And so here are my many squares of foil. Now that we have our three ingredients made for this battery, we can go ahead and build it. First, I'm going to place one of our vinegar-soaked cardboard papers on top of a penny. And next, I'm going to take one of our squares of aluminum and place it on top of that. And that's all we need right here for a single battery cell. As you can see, if I measure the voltage across this battery, we're getting around 0.58 volts. For this, the side with the penny is going to be our positive and the side with the foil is going to be our negative. Now if I want to get a higher voltage, just like adding batteries in series, I can go ahead and repeat the process on top of this with more cells. So we can do that by placing another penny on top of this zinc, another vinegar soaked paper, and then another square of foil. Now as you can see, when I measure the voltage of these two cells, we get about one volt across them. Okay, so now I'm going to take this process that I've been doing and I'm going to create many more cells on top of this and I'll be back with you guys in just a moment. As you can see from the slightly larger stack, we're getting a voltage of around 3.4 volts. As you can see, although the battery is very weak, it's still enough to light up this LED. Now this battery will get bad fast because the vinegar will dry out quickly from the cardboard. However, if you want it to last longer, you can try wrapping it in food wrap or even tape. And this should still in the moisture, making it last for much longer. Anyway, so now let's talk about where the power we're receiving from this battery is coming from. So in the process of the battery, when the acid is exposed to the zinc, a process happens called oxidation. This means that the zinc atoms are going to become a net positive ion. An ion is something that has its protons not equal to the number of its electrons. So basically, this process of oxidation will free up two electrons from the zinc atoms. The zinc ions will actually be aqueous. This means that they're going to be suspended in the solution between them. The copper atoms over here accept the electrons, creating them to be neutral. So basically, this flow of electrons happens because the electrons are going to be happier at a lower energy state. And that energy state exists over here at the copper. So rather than just directly connecting them over to the copper to quickly neutralize them out, instead we give them conductors so they have to go through a little bit of work before they reach that energy state over here. And this is the main ideology behind how we convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Batteries that you see like this work on the same premise. The positive side will have a copper rod going down, while the inside cover is going to be coated in zinc. In between the copper and zinc, rather than a liquid, it's going to be a paste that does the same effect. And so using this process, we're able to create the battery. And I'll have videos linked in the description below if you want to go learn about them a little bit more. So now you know how to create your own battery and how it works. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more like it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you'll get our weekly science videos. And if you learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up on the video. So with that all said, be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own lightning chimes.